All right, so this problem is one that a lot of people um, wanted help on because um, it showed up in the homework. And it's a pretty good problem to look at because it involves a lot of different things we've been doing. So um, let's just go ahead and read what's given to us. We have that a ball is thrown from a height of 70 feet. The model of the ball's height given time t is given as this equation here. Um, so basically this is telling us that for some time t, whatever, whenever we plug in t, it's going to give us a height h. Um, so our pairs, when we graph, are going to look like our input time and our output h. Usually we write x and y, but in this instance we're actually applying uh, these variables to something real. So time and height. Time, height. So we want to find its maximum height. <clears throat> we know that uh, this parabola is probably going to look something like this. Um, right. With the vertex here, which gives us actually, if we see, uh, if this is h and this is t, this will be the largest or max height. So basically, it boils down to getting this h here in vertex form, the function uh, that models this motion. So, so let's go ahead and try to get this into vertex form. So the way I like to do these is just focus on this part here, everything that's inside the brackets, and then worry about the uh, negative 10 later. We'll multiply that in later. So for now, we want to try to work with this uh, t squared minus 6t minus 7. And so we're going to go ahead and factor or uh, put this in this part into vertex form by completing the square. And given enough practice, you can see that if we... Or you could do the box method as well if you want. Uh, I'll do that after I do this uh, the quicker way that we should know by now, which is going to be t, and then it's always going to be half of this constant here in front of the linear term. Uh, t, so half of negative 6 is negative 3, and then squared. And this um, constant here is going to be, uh, well, we know we want, we want to get an exact copy of this equation down here. And I know that when I FOIL this out here, I'm going to get t squared minus 6t plus 9. But um, I don't want this plus 9 here, so what I'm going to do is just go up here and subtract the 9, which means this went away. And then on top of that, I'm going to subtract 7, and we see that this thing here, we have an x squared minus 6t minus 7, which actually matches this. Uh, whoops, I said x, I meant t squared minus 6t minus 7. So t squared minus 6t minus 7. So altogether, we have h equals, focusing on this one now, h equals negative 10, t minus 3 squared, and then negative 9 minus 7, it's going to give me negative 16. And so now all we need to do is multiply in this negative 10. It'll go in front of that squared term, and it'll also multiply to the negative 16. So we get negative 10 t minus 3 squared, and then negative 10 
times negative 16, right? Because we foiled it in over here. Um, and this here just equals positive 160, so I'm just going to write that in. Let me go ahead and move this down. And so what this tells me is that my vertex is going to equal the opposite of what's on the inside here, which is just going to give me a 3. And then k stays the same, so 160. So I know that in 3 seconds, I'm going to be at 160 uh, feet in the air. So this will be my my vertex here actually. This point here describes the highest. So the max height is 160. Now for part B, how long until the ball hits the ground? Well we know when the ball hits the ground that the height here, h is equal to 0. If you think about that, when you throw a ball in the air and it hits the ground, the height of the ball is 0, right? If we treat the ground as uh, 0 height. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just go ahead and use this equation here, this representation of our model. And so we set h equal to 0. We have a negative 10, t minus 3 squared, plus 160. And we can subtract 160 from both sides. And we're going to get negative 160 equals negative 10 t minus 3 squared. Uh, 10, negative 10 times t minus 3 squared. Um, and here we could divide by negative 10. So we get that. Sixteen is going to equal because it cancels here t minus three squared. Now what I can do from this point on is take the square root of both sides. I'm going to get plus or minus on both uh, on the left side, and I'm going to get plus or minus uh, four equals t minus three. And so now what I can do to get t alone is add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get t is equal to 3 plus or minus 4. In other words, t is equal to 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. And t is equal to 3 minus 4, which is equal to negative 1. So we get rid of the negative time because we don't know how to interpret that in our physical uh, model. Um, we don't typically treat negative times as a valid time. So we'll just look at t equals 7 uh, seconds for h to equal 0, or the ball... hits the ground after seven seconds.